Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is on cardiac camp and the ABC method of priority. And my sticky note, cardio, cardiac medication overviews, the ABCCDE. I'm going to go over these cardiac meds and I'm going to talk about this order of priority and how to look at things a little bit different and to look at medications when we're looking at an order of priority. You can find me on social media, Nursing Camp, or download on nursingcamp.com. All right, let's nurse on. Okay, A, B, C, C, D, E. When we're looking at this method, we're looking at priority, priority of, of these medications in a way that when we, when, when we see them, we know uh, what to do in priority. All right, let's get into it. All right, so a hand-sewn lab, your acute meds. And in your acute meds here, the A's are specific to any medication that is going to be acute. I cover this in another lecture because each medication is very specific. Like, for example, the A for adenosine. Adenosine is acute med because it's adenosine's on the scene to stop PSVT. And that's acute because it's acute because you only give it in an acute situation. So when somebody has SVT, you see that you need to stop and correct that rhythm. And adenosine is one of those medications. Uh, H would be heparin. And heparin's important because of there's medications that you, you need to know about protamine sulfate. You need to know that um, you need to monitor the PTT and um, heparin drips versus sub-Q heparin. A is atropine. And atropine is also acute because it is symptomatic bradycardia. Um, N is nitro. D is dopamine. S is S streptokinase. E is epinephrine. W is warfarin. So warfarin also you'd be monitoring the PT and INR. And you'll see my lectures on that where I cover those medications. Uh, norepinephrine, as in labofed, uh, amiodarone, and dobutamine. All these A meds are all acute, requiring further on assessment. So if you see those in questions, you should put your acute hat on and because the assessment is going to be acute and intervention is de definitely needed. Okay, next one is beta blockers. Now, beta blockers, we monitor the uh, four Bs of beta blockers. These are four things that could go wrong. There's actually six Bs, but for this, I'm just going to go through the basics of it. And those four Bs are bradycardia. Um, blood pressure, blood glucose, it masks blood, blood glucose, and we'll talk more about that in the beta blocker lecture, and um, bronchoconstriction. Now, beta blockers are unique because there's beta 1 and beta 2, and I cover that more in the beta blocker lecture where we talk about you know which ones are specific because bronchoconstriction and blood glucose are very specific to this beta 1 versus beta 2 action. The next one is calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are important to know because there's two types of calcium channel blockers. There's DV, AV, and pines. Well DV, AV like diltiazem and verapamil effect rate. And that's important to know because we know the SA node goes to the AV node and then to the Purkinje fibers where you get a contraction in heart rate. Well that's important because diltiazem and verapamil affect this heart rate. Where imlodipine is more specific to just blood pressure. And I cover that in my calcium channel blockers lecture. The next one is calcium glycosurides. Now glycosurides are important because of that's digoxin. And digoxin is the monitoring is K2 band AV. And again I cover this in my lecture where we monitor potassium being low. We monitor the level being 2, bradycardia, anorexia, nausea, dysrhythmias, diarrhea, um, abdominal pain, and visual halos. So the approach is, is that there's a lot to monitor with digoxin. Um, you would think it would be acute, but it is more of a chronic medication because it you need a level in it. Next is 
um, diuretics. Now, diuretics are important because of there's two types. You have Lasix, and then you have spir spironolactone. Okay, but it's not really that acute unless it's IV. But generally, it's dealing with fluid. And fluid is important because of, you know, a patient with CHF, we're going to try to treat them for that. However, you know, generally, these medications up here are more acute than uh, diuretics. We see diuretics. It's a more common medication. It could be done on a med surge floor um, and even, even maternity if needed. Another thing I put in here, oops, look at that. Another thing I, I put in here specifically is um, ACEs and ARBs. Well, ACEs and ARBs are in this lower level because they're not acute, okay? Um, they, they deal with fluid, and they deal with the renin-angiotensin system. And that renin-angiotensin system is important because of ACEs we monitor specifically about ACE king high. And what I, we monitor, and you'll see that in my ACE inhibitor lecture, is that um, angioedema, cough, Electrolytes, which one? Potassium, high. And the same is monitored for ARPs, where I like to call ortho sartan. Because losartan is an ARP, and orthostatics tend to be the primary um, focus for that medication. However, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, you don't call the doctor up at 2 a.m. and wake them up um, because of uh, a lisinopril. But there is things you monitor, and generally we, um, that's why it's not a highest level of priority. And then electrolytes, like your um, potassium, your magnesium, your calcium, and you know, uh, all those medications that you would give that are have their own priority action. However, um, it's replacement. They do affect cardiac, but um, priority action, it's not really a priority. It's independent of their self. And then the last thing is everything else. And everything else would be like your um, Provacol, your Nystatins, Nystatin, sorry, um, your Statins, and um, like your simvastatin um, and your cholesterol medications. And that's generally not acute. Well, how this works is, is that once you identify these medications, then you will uh, look at this priority list. And how it works is, is that anything up here is acute. And what we do is, is that we see those medications. They require further on assessment. Then it goes in order of priority. Beta blockers are generally next. Then calcium blockers like DV is mainly important. Then calcium glycosurides. Now the interesting thing about that is, is that whenever you put somebody on a calcium channel blocker, you should be looking up and down. Are they on a beta blocker? And if they are, we might worry about that. We might question that order. Because the principle is, is that, you know, if you give a calcium channel blocker and a beta blocker, and both are decreasing the heart rate, if you give both at the same time, which one is it? Is it the beta blocker or is it the calcium channel blocker? That's problematic, especially in the NCLEX, because um, if a problem does happen, you can't identify which one it is. It's the same thing when we talk about um, calcium channel uh, blockers and calcium glycoside. And the issue is, is that which one is it? So if the heart rate is going down, is it the digoxin or is it the diltiazem? So those orders generally get questioned as well. This is different than practice because in practice you're going to see that that might happen. So digoxin and diltiazem, you know, you would question those two medications. So order priority. Um, then we go down to ACEs and ARBs, and they're not highest priority. There is actions to be monitored like potassium and um, different things like that. But uh, more important is, is these secondary assessments of these. Well, my name is Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp, and I'm covering um, cardiac medications in this. You can follow me on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, and I also have uh, uh, products on um, books on my study sheets on Etsy if you want to uh, uh, look at those. I'm also on Facebook and say hello and like, comment, or 
um, see my next uh, lecture where I cover a hand-sewn lad. Thank you, and nurse on.